Tech Time update, uh, T10 technical channel, empowerment through education. We'll cover hubs, uh, all things hubs. Um, and we're getting some brake drums too. So uh, let's get at it. Um, I'm gonna try to keep it kind of short. So I got my hubs back from the machine shop and um, <laughs> I had the machine shop uh, press press out the old bearing races and install new ones um, that came with my Koyo bearings. Um, that's the bearing you want to get right there. Koyo. Koyo. Trucks originally, and um, unless somebody didn't abuse the truck, they generally last forever with good service, but, um, well, uh, we didn't know the condition of these, so. I will be examining the old races and uh, have them and the old bearings, but that didn't want to do that now. Um, hmm. uh, tough day. Um, so uh, the, the hubs were media blasted and I've been dealing with the same machine shop since high school. Um, or you know, 25 years, 20 years, and um, uh, the gentleman's name is Woody Jasper, and he's my machinist. And uh, you know, I don't even have to, I don't have to think twice. Um, just stuff's done right. Um, so this is where the back bearing goes, and that's that's it. Look at that, perfect. Um, these are packed with grease. Um, we'll get into that in a second. Um, so I did get, um, I did get new lug nut studs because some of them were boogered up. Um, uh, he pressed out the studs, but you can see the splines there. And these get air chiseled in from the back side. I'll cover that in another tech video. Um, but what I'm doing with these now is I will be finishing them. Because this is a visual factor. You know, when the wheel's on, you do see that. Um, so, um, these are going to be cosmetically finished. Um, I thought about getting them plated, but um, time constraints and... Well, I wasn't too sure. I, um, I've seen these things be silver in pictures, and I've seen, like, a pewter color. I've seen them be black. I'm not too sure. So, I'm just going with black. Um... So, that's gonna be my finishing step. Um, I, I'm a fan of lacquer. I don't like Rust-Oleum enamel. Now, crystal clear enamel is actually a lacquer. Um, but uh, what I do is I do, I'll do like three mist coats of regular lacquer, because it's DTM, direct to metal. Um, no primer, no Rust-Oleum enamel, uh, industrial enamel garbage, because you can't recoat over that. It'll turn like orange peel effect and flash. Um, I'll wipe these down with some brake clean. Um, but the media blasting, um, I'm satisfied with it, you know? Um, but what I'm not satisfied with is this. I was just tinkering with these earlier. Oops, that one. I was tinkering with this earlier, and uh, I was looking over my hardware that I got from Cruiser Outfitters and um, out in Salt Lake, and I was wondering about the, the whole brown nut and how that was going to look, because to me that takes away from the bling factor. Oh. So I was just sitting here and, you know, just gonna stage one and this one right here, this, watch this, see how it stops? Okay, that's because the thread's there. This one doesn't, it goes in, look. And I'll be damned if it's not, it's not, it's not a little bit stripped out. Um, check it out. Look at the other one, see the threads up top? All the ones got threads up top, and this one doesn't. Um, that's um, it didn't I, it didn't put me in panic mode. Um, uh, and and it's funny because Woody told me my machine is. He's like, yeah, we had to take heat to everything to get it out. Well, when I was taking these apart, and you can look in one of my tech the tech video, um, one of the studs, only one, came out as in this form. It came out with a, a nut attached to the stud. It came out together. 
which I didn't think anything of at the time because that's happened with manifold studs and stuff, but it was absolutely this one. There's no doubt in my mind because why else would all the other ones have to be torched out and this one um, didn't, um, that single one didn't. And I, I wish I had that to show you, but. And uh, I'll tell you what, there's one right there with the, with the damn uh, nut on it. So I'm curious here. I wonder if it's an SAE stud from the hardware store. That would really, uh, yeah. You want to, you want, um, you want to tinker with me? That's a good way to do it. Look at this. Check this out. Might be. That's the stud that was in there. Um, the rest of them. Let's see. I put the nuts on. Like that nut is loose there, but this one's not. That's a totally different stud. Get that? But maybe it was. It's almost like. It's almost like they put it in backwards. They put the, you know what it is? They put the, they put the threads on it. Um, eh, threads aren't mashed, but they put the extra long threads in it to maybe go down. Who knows? Um, but another, another example of kind of, you bump into stuff um, along the way and you gotta deal with it. Kind of like one of those uh, roadblocks in life. But um, before the tech video, I thought how I'm gonna deal with it. Um, I'm going to put this in with red Loctite in addition to the green Loctite. And, uh, oops, there, I'm gonna put it in with the red Loctite. Um, and I probably, I'm gonna measure this and see if the depth, and see if I don't have a longer stud. I don't know how far that goes down in there. Um, but it looks, uh, it looks to be a lot longer than the, stud um how can we figure this out right ah here we go okay here's a windshield wiper uh metal rod so okay so i put my finger on it i pull it out and the tip of my finger is how far it goes down um it's tough to say whether the threads are all good let's look at the other ones the other ones go down about the same amount so that's interesting. You have, the question is, are they threaded all the way down? Um, I'll have to figure that out. You know, the threads could stop. Um, but that being said, that gives us, that gives us some extra threads to play with. So hopefully, uh, oh, yeah, look at the threads, they go all the way down. So um, that's to be determined, but I've got, uh, I've got a few uh, ace cards up my sleeve to deal with that, but it's just kind of strange that, I just wonder if these are the, it's like, why would you put the stud in backwards? Um, you wouldn't. And that's not enough meat, because that's not enough meat because the axle shaft is thicker. It's definitely this size. Um, hmm. Um, but it's a red flag. So, um, you know, this is a cosmetic, uh, refresh as well as a uh, um, mechanical one. And I have to admit, the brown nuts aren't gonna fly. <laughs> I mean, nobody wants brown nuts, right? Right, and brown, that's to be terrible. So um, I do want a cosmetic factor to this. It's gonna be black, the cap. So I found this in my stash. Um, uh, mark that part number down because it's a unique nut. Um, and this is just happens, I just happen to have this too. But it's silver zinc plated, but, but check this out. I don't know if you guys know your bolt bolt mark heads and stuff, but nuts, a nut like this with markings on, you see the dots? You get it right. Um, there's three dots. Okay, you see them, they're in a triangle. There we go, one, two, three. Those three dots, I looked in the uh, book, this is a Mark 7 hex nut. Um, uh, let's see, there we go. Three three nuts, or uh, three dots, see? Okay, so it's a um, uh, grade, uh, Mark 7 in JIS is no less than 10.9. It's like 10 point, uh, 10.11 or something like that. This is greater than a 10.9 nut. That tells me I could use this. So I'm gonna win uh, Made in Japan too. So I'm gonna order these, this brown, this brown plating. Um, 
it's like it's a cross between like it's not olive green it's like a doo-doo brown um it is a zinc plating um i've gotten a few fasteners lately um that are like this and it's kind of god they go from silver to brown i guess the silver didn't hold up but um the the washers that's definitely a toyota washer with the bling like that and you know um cruiser tea can only sells oem parts like this um you know this is one of their kits so um uh not a questionnaire to know any toyota part i just don't like the brown zinc plating um i want you know it's gonna be a black hub and I want the hardware to stand out because I will be clear coating it with the crystal clear uh, afterwards. So, um, okay, so enough of that. Uh, we know what we gotta do there. So I'll, I'll tape this off because that's a, a gasket surface. I'll put tape on that because we don't wanna get paint down in there. And I will, I'll tape this off too. Um, those are these small ones right here. That's for your brake drum. Um, that's the brake drum retainer. So that's what those two small holes are for. Um, okay, so finishes. Um, and then we're gonna get into controversial topics like what's the world's best grease to pack your bearings with? Ding, right there. Um, it has no petroleum odor or stink to it. It smells like fruit actually, which is kind of odd. Don't let your, don't try this at home kids. Um, but it doesn't stink. And I've been using this exact product for many, many, many years with great success. And um, anyone who tells you full synthetic is not the way to go in any lubrication product anytime, anywhere on your Land Cruiser simply, <sighs> simply has not been enlightened yet by modern technology. Um, and we're gonna get into some interesting topics like what is the best gear lubricant to fill the full floating axle with upon reassembly. Well, we're gonna go there and we're gonna open up that can of worms full throttle because I've already done the research and the R&D and the science behind it. And it's not royal purple or anything like that. I found the, the premium gear lubricant on the market that has all the scientific backing. And uh, it may surprise you which one it is. It is a full synthetic, but um, yeah, this full synthetic uh, topics, you know, um, I mean, this is obviously a Mobile One sales pitch, but Mobile One's, I mean, state-of-the-art stuff, but full synthetic, um, three times improvement in grease sparing life. I don't doubt that. Exceptional wear protection, don't doubt that. Reliable lubrication, wide range temperatures. So it's got viscosity, 40% better resistance to water washout. Well, synthetic, since, since oil doesn't mix with water and it's a synthetic product, um, you know, I would say, uh, I would say that's valid. Um, 2021, so it's updated information. But, um, and it's got the NLGI uh, seal with the GC-LB, um, National Wheel and Bearing Lubricant Institute. It's made in the USA. Um, okay, fine. Uh, Toyota doesn't sell grease that I know of, and they don't fully synthetic wheel bearing grease. So um, this is my, definitely my choice. This is what also I pack in my grease gun and grease my tie rod ends and my propeller shaft circ fittings with transfer case linkage, anything that requires um, the standard grease. Now we're not talking about the Molly EP that goes inside the burr field, that's a different topic. So don't get it uh, confused, it's general purpose grease. Um, you would pack your front wheel bearings with it, for example. It's never failed me, not once ever. So why change? If you got a good thing, you keep it good. You keep using it. Um, so yeah, I'll put on, a, I'll prep these up, tape them off and lacquer and then clear coat on, um, and then uh, drive the studs in, drive the wheel studs in from the back. Um, I'll take my polisher and polish this down really good with a polisher, um, and then put my studs in, and then um, um, I might hit it with a little bit of clear, but this is a gasket sealing surface, so I'm, I'm debating that. I don't, I don't, you know, technically it should be sealed with, um, orange FIPG. So I might do that because once this thing goes together, it's going together right and it's not coming apart. That much I know and having an SST tool, but the ceiling surface on here, OEM type gaskets, um, definitely an OEM, definitely a made in Japan seal. That's not a Pep Boys seal for any means. Um, the fact that this is zinc plated uh, tells me that that's a Japan part too. Um, you wouldn't find that on any garbage part. Um, 
it's definitely definitely quality um quality made in japan stuff being zinc plated so let's see uh, but you know um, but the idea is not to leave anything unpainted i don't want to rust i want it to be blingy thingy forever um okay so lastly um coffee break Okay, so um, we're gonna order we're gonna order the uh, Markhead nuts tomorrow. Well, how many do we need? One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, one, two, three. Yeah. So I'll just order a twenty pack. I mean, that'd be good to have around. Um, so I want to get into the brake drum really quick because one came in unexpectedly early. But um, okay, so without getting into the I don't really have a sales pitch opinion on a brake drum except this um i'm a brembo man on anything that i can get brembo coats all their non-contact surfaces in ceramic um i guess it's ceramic powder coated or whatever um i did i did graze rock auto um and some other sources but i was looking for the brembo really um I they they had one their their premium grade brake drum. Brembo doesn't make uh, brake drums for a sixty or sixty two, so they had one that had a a high temperature paint on it. Now my normal understanding of Toyota brake drums, the OEM ones, I've never seen ones with a finish on it. Um, so maybe they've changed something. But I I uh, I saw a picture online somewhere. And it alluded to they had a finish on them. And I confirmed it um, by calling somebody that had one. And the, I, I just opened this box. This is unscripted. And um, sure enough, they have like a, a finish on them. Um, so, yeah, I haven't looked at this drum yet. This, see, they used to be covered with oil. You used to get a bare metal brake drum. And it would be coated with machining and cutting oil. And this is something I haven't seen before. Um, now, the inside, Brembo's would be all coated here with ceramic. Um, this surface here is notorious for sticking to the axle shaft. That's why they put the paper gaskets on it, which I, which I didn't order. Um, but um, yeah, I'll probably tape this off. Um, huh, the EQ logo right there. I'll probably tape this off, um, and then paint this in here with, um, some sort of high temperature paint, um, just to prevent corrosion, and I'll definitely paint in here. I'm not sure why Toyota did it. I guess they just laid it on one side and painted it. It's kind of stupid. But you can see the flash factor here. It's already got some flash on it from, um, that's not cutting oil, so... It definitely doesn't have any cutting oil on it, but I'll rust proof these, and this side is absolutely gonna get a second set of uh, uh, coat. Now, what I saw too online is, it's very rare to see an aftermarket brake drum with one of these on it. It's a balancing weight, and they were balanced. Now, the, the, the high quality ones, the highest quality ones at Rock Auto were like $79 a piece, and they claim they were balanced. Um, and they showed some cheesy video or whatever, but we know the Toyota ones are always balanced. So I went with the Toyota ones. Um, oh, the price point on these, I'm not gonna say it on the video. All I gotta say is you call yourself and find out. The price point was shocking um, to say the least, but you know, um, that's part number. That covers, I think, 60 and 62. Um, so, but uh, that right there, I'm gonna order those. That's where the hex nut goes. I'm sorry, the Phillips head the beveled Phillips head V-head screw that holds the drum onto that. See? That's where the drum screw goes. So I gotta order those. And I will put them in with anti seize because I had a bit of time getting the old one out. They're for the getting the drum off. So, and I guess that's some sort of weep hole design or something there. But, um, yeah. <laughs> they weren't cheap, man. I'll tell you that. Um, that this whole project's gone over budget and this is one of the main reasons why but uh you know i the old drums were not machinable not that i'd ever even consider machining brake drums but um they weren't machinable because of what happened with the brakes being dragging and stuff um i did find out why the brakes drug 
um, it was because the bell crank cable that I showed in my tech video was not in the bell crank. It was outside of it. It got hung up. So, so yeah, so that's it. Um, I'm going to paint and, uh, yeah. Um, I guess the big thing is I'm going to make sure I'm, this is my primary concern before I paint and I'm going to tape them off and get a coat of paint on them. Um, the ghost axle, um, came out really good, but I think it needs still another coat of paint on it. Um, so, well, that's where we are and that's what we're doing because at the end of the day, this is what it's all about. I've nicknamed this thing my precious and that's simply what it is. My precious. Because this guy and that place make dreams happen. <laughs> it sounds so cheesy, but it's true. Uh, I definitely, I've always had a, I've always had a, just, I don't know, one of those p puzzling fascinations with a factory loaded slip diff, and I have one, and it wasn't really by choice, but here we are, it just happened, so, um, I did spray this, so it wouldn't flash rust, I sprayed it down with clear, so I gotta polish this off, um, with my DA, and we'll get into Scotch Bright polishing and right angle grinders. I'll show you guys some stuff, some tricks uh, that I picked up over the years working at the dealerships. And you'll never use a wire brush or razor blade ever again. I swear to God, man. It's uh, when you see how easy and cool it is with a right angle polisher and this stuff here, and one of these characters. Uh, I've got a few of these different ones, but. Uh, this is Scotch Bright. There's different. Um, red is for head, as in aluminum. Uh, brown is for block, cast iron. Um, there's gray and blue, and then because I don't, because <laughs> I don't remember the gray and blue, I'm nicknamed for them. There's my cheat sheet. <laughs> this has been in here since T10 College. That's funny. My cheat sheet. Um, I don't know what these things do, stupid samples, but uh, yeah, this is how we will prep everything. And this is how we're gonna deal with the uh, the inconsistencies up here too. There's some, you know, there's some there's some boogers on here. These are a little dented up and stuff, so we'll get it right. But that's where we're going and that's how we're gonna do it. Um, and like, and then this is, like the thread title says, this is how I approach, I approach my full flooding axle repair, restore and refresh because nothing else matters except fully synthetic products.